Welcome to another Armed Anglican Handgun Review. Um, in this video, we're going to be comparing two little uh, 22 long rifle semi-automatics, uh, the Taurus PT-22 versus the Beretta 21A Bobcat. And these are two pocket carry uh, little mouse guns that have been around for quite a while and are pretty unique. In this comparative review, we're going to be looking at um, how well these two handguns fulfill their intended mission. We're going to be looking at the quality and the reliability and the ergonomics uh, compared between the two. And we'll end with a summary evaluation of our findings. So the mission of these little mouse guns is that they should be very concealable, high capacity, small caliber handguns that can be used as a backup weapon in a close quarters self-defense situation, or more to the point, up close and personal. The actual guns being tested in this video are a uh, Taurus PT-22 uh, that we purchased earlier this year, 2016. Uh, we bought it new. You may have seen it. It was featured in a couple of uh, prior videos we did, and we'll talk about those a little more later, uh, where we found some problems with it, and we, f we uh, took care of, uh, we came up with a fix for that. Uh, this is a 2015 model, and since the prior videos, we've put aftermarket rosewood grips just because they look cool on it. Uh, the, the second handgun is a Beretta 21A Bobcat that we purchased recently, uh, again in 2016, used. And this is a 1995 model, so it's uh, over 20 years old. Uh, and as near as we can tell, the grips on it are aftermarket. They're rubber grips. They're not the standard uh, plastic Beretta grips that we believe uh, was on this model in uh, the 1990s. Um, again, uh, one, one gun that's new, basically, and the other is, is kind of old, and we're going to uh, see how they stack up against each other. And you can see that the two handguns look pretty similar. Um, that's because the Taurus PT-22 is actually based on the Beretta 21A. We believe it's a licensed copy. Um, it's not identical. Functionally, there are some differences that we'll point out, uh, but it is based on the uh, Beretta Bobcat. And this shows you a comparison of the size and weight of the two different firearms. Uh, the PT-22 fully loaded is uh, about 14.5 ounces. The Beretta just a little lighter at 14.1. Um, one significant difference between the two, the uh, PT-22 is double action only, whereas the Bobcat uh, is double and single action. That, that is the first shot is double action and then from then on it's single action. The PT-22 uh, has uh, one additional round. It's an 8 plus 1. And the Beretta 7 plus 1. Both, of course, 22 long rifle. The uh, PT-22 is just a bit bigger uh, than the Beretta. Length comparison, 5.28 for the PT-22 and 4.9 inches for the Beretta. Height of 4.2 inches for the PT-22 versus... 3.67 for the Beretta, and the width is the same. They're, 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 this is the grip width, and the grip on both of these guns are 1.3 inches, uh, which is kind of fat for a little pocket gun. I uh, really like that. It's easier to get a good purchase on the gun. Um, so these are uh, just the physical differences. Uh, another difference between the two, the Taurus PT-22 has a slightly longer barrel length. It's 2 and 3 quarter uh, inches, 2.75, uh, versus the Beretta, which has a 2.44 inch long barrel. Now, uh, that really probably doesn't make much difference in what, you know, the, the uh, punch you're going to get out of these little mouse guns. But just to point it out, the uh, PT-22 does have a little bit longer barrel. Uh, we uh, measured the trigger pull on both of the firearms. Uh, the uh, PT-22, as I mentioned, is uh, double action only. And we pulled uh, eight and a half pounds, 8.5 pounds on it pretty consistently. Um, the trigger pull on the Beretta in double action is uh, slightly less at 7.5 pounds. 
and in single action it's a nice light uh, 3.2 pounds uh, both triggers are really nice I mean for what they are they're smooth I know that the PT-22 when it was new was a little bit uh, rough uh, it's pretty pretty normal you know for a new firearm it takes a few rounds to get them broken in um, so you can see there's a bit of difference there but nothing really significant uh, in conclusion uh, concerning the mission of these uh, little mouse guns uh, we think that both firearms fulfill that originally conceived mission reasonably well uh, we've give, given them both a thumbs up um, I'm not going to get into the uh, age-old discussion about the effectiveness of the 22 long rifle round and should you carry a 22 for self-defense. Um, sure you should. If you put uh, eight or nine rounds, you know, in rapid succession into a bad guy, uh, that bad guy is going to be stopped. Um, sure, if you uh, feel more comfortable with a, uh, a uh, heavier round, carry it. Do, you have to do what you're comfortable with. Uh, as for me, I don't have any problem uh, carrying either one of these uh, firearms as a backup in my boot. I generally carry a uh, 9mm LC9 or a Ruger LCR uh, 38 Special with some Plus P in it. Some other things also, but I uh, have no problem with uh, the 22 as a backup. And I, you know, really... The uh, argument can rage on. It's not going to change anything. <laughs> Do what's comfortable uh, for you. Let's talk about quality now. And really quality, the quality of a firearm is uh, another measure of its reliability. It's got to be, you know, you have to be able to trust it. A self-defense handgun has to be of quality construction and design. Um, so we're going to just point out some things that we found. Uh, with both of these handguns. Uh, we have a longer history with the Taurus, of course, and if you've seen some of the other videos, you're aware of uh, at least one of the issues that we had with it, and that was the magazine feed. Um, as it sits right now, it's really reliable. We've fixed all the issues we ran across. With the Beretta, we haven't had it long. Uh, we haven't really found much wrong with it. It's a uh, 20-year-old firearm and it uh, seems to perform well but here's a here's a few things that we want to point out now uh, the first issue with the PT 22 is one that we really covered extensively in uh, two prior videos um, what we found is there was a really serious uh, failure to feed problem um, that we tracked down as being a problem with the magazine uh, construction or design, uh, not the firearm itself. And you can see on this uh, slide that uh, the fix we came up with was pretty inexpensive and simple. It's just adding an O-ring uh, to help the magazine seat firmly into the gun uh, to get rid of the play that we found uh, that was causing the malfunctions. Um, I'm going to I'll put a link to the two other videos uh, here. Uh, on this one if you haven't taken a look at it yet. Uh, again, we've we've got this fixed, and right now this it feeds. I mean, most of the time, uh, barring a uh, last round uh, stovepipe, once in a great while. Uh, the PT-22 is, is, is very reliable in terms of uh, the feed from the magazine. And another problem that we had uh, with the PT-22 was it just wasn't accurate. Um, it consistently shot low. Um, you don't expect a little pocket gun like this to be a real, you know, a target, you know, precision target uh, firearm, but uh, we were kind of frustrated with it and we did some measuring and, and calculations. And what you see here was actually an on the desk calculation that we did uh, prove by uh, firing the gun on a, on a, a T, you know, uh, teeing up the muzzle and, Firing it and, and what we calculated proved uh, correct. We were seeing about consistently about two inches low at five yards. And of course, anything beyond that, and that's not really the function of this firearm, but of course, it increases. And so we actually went in there and, and fixed it uh, using a level line from the back sight to the front sight, removing the material above that level line. Uh, you know, it was a long process. 
Uh, checked it now, and right now the sights are right on. So uh, again, again, we had a problem with it. Um, it wasn't what we expected. We expected better quality than that. We expected that they would have designed this uh, sight to be a bit more accurate. Uh, again, at the present time, the PT-22 is fixed as far as its accuracy. And another problem we had with the little PT-22 was at about 350 rounds. Uh, the small part here uh, that you see actually broke in two. Uh, it's some sort of plastic composite. Um, Taurus customer service was really great about it. They put a new part in the mail. I had it like two days later. Um, I don't know if this is going to be a recurring problem um, or if it was just a maybe a bad a bad part that was weak. Uh, since then, uh, it's that part is, is hanging in there and we probably have another, I don't know, 400 rounds on the new part. Uh, again, we would expect a better design or, or better quality from Taurus uh, than have a, a, a part like this fail at 350 rounds. Again, it's fixed now. When we first bought the Beretta, we found that uh, once in a while the rounds just would not load from the magazine. They were actually jammed in there. Um, and so after messing with it for a little while, we found out that if you just flick the follower up, up and down after you load the magazines just to make sure there's no binding and it kind of gets everything lined up correctly, it's no problem. So in conclusion, um, both firearms have had some minor troubles um, again, we have a lot more experience with the PT-22. We bought it new. Uh, we were not pleased with the quality. We had the magazine problem. Um, we had the problem with the broken part in the slide. Um, we had the problem with the, uh, the front sight needing to be adjusted. So the quality was questionable. Now, did that cost us much? No, it didn't. Um, if we would have had to take it somewhere to a gunsmith or something, it probably would have cost you know, quite a bit. Uh, we never did have to send it back to the factory. They would have honored the warranty. Um, so we gave it a questionable, not a full thumbs down, because it works like a champ now, but it did take some work to get it to that point. Um, the Beretta, we had that uh, magazine problem. Now, we have a 20-year-old magazine. Uh, we don't have another one. Uh, we, we intend to buy another one and see if we have the same binding problem with it. Uh, but once we got the technique down that you just kind of flip the, the follower after you uh, load the rounds, it's been perfect. Um, we gave it a thumb, some thumbs up. As far as the quality, you know, you, they always say you get what you pay for. Uh, the uh, difference in price of the two these two firearms, which are both being produced now, is uh, a significant factor. The Beretta does cost quite a bit more than the uh, Taurus. And so you would expect uh, a greater level of quality when you open the box. And again, we don't know that because we didn't evaluate a new, a new firearm. Uh, so again, uh, we gave the PT-22 a questionable as far as quality. And we gave the Beretta 21A Bobcat a thumbs up. Let's talk about reliability now, and uh, any self-defense firearm has to be reliable. I mean, you're betting your life on it, and you have to be able to depend upon it to perform when you need it with a reasonable lev level of accuracy, and that means all the time. Uh, we decided to do two uh, reliability tests uh, which these, with these two firearms. Uh, first, we did an accuracy test where we uh, teed up the muzzles of uh, each gun and, you know, just to see how they perform uh, against a target. And the other one, which is probably more important uh, for a little uh, pocket gun like this, is uh, ammunition. Um, what we heard all the time with both of these is, oh, you got to be really careful which ammunition you use. You know, you have to use CCI mini mags or you have to use velocitors or, you know, stay away from stingers and all that. So we just decided we'd just test it with everything that we had in the 
in the ammo drawer um, and uh, came up with some interesting results. For the accuracy testing, each gun was supported uh, at the muzzle with a with a T to stabilize it. Um, for each uh, firearm, we used one full magazine plus one in the chamber, and of course that was eight plus one for the PT-22 and seven plus one for the Beretta. Uh, we fired against a one-inch grid target at four yards, and we did one try only. We filled a magazine, uh, gave each firearm uh, one chance to do its best. And here are the results for the PT-22. Uh, we had nine shots at four yards. Of course, it's double action only against the one-inch grid target. And eight out of nine of the shots uh, were in the two-inch diameter bullseye. Now, that uh, one flyer over there was the shooter. That was the shooter's fault. It was a little bit of flinch there. It was the first shot of the day, and we let this ride. Like I said, we gave it. We gave each uh, firearm one chance to do its best. Um, the first shot on both of these firearms is double action only. Um, I guess that shooter who shall not be named in this video uh, should have been a little more careful on the first shot. But all in all, if you take that uh, flinch out of the picture, it was pretty good results. And these are the results for the Beretta Bobcat. Uh, eight shots at four yards uh, and this is the first shot is of course double action uh, and then single action for the remaining uh, rounds at the one inch grid target and eight of eight shots are in the two inch diameter bullseye no flinching here uh, great performance and now on into the second part of our reliability testing and that's testing various ammunitions uh, like I said, we just went to the ammo drawer, uh, grabbed what we had, uh, gave it a try. And, and uh, also, as I've mentioned before, people had been cautioning us about both the PT-22 and the Beretta, that you uh, you got to find the right ammunition. They're really finicky. Um, and we'll show you the results on that. Uh, we had eight different types of ammo in there, ranging from uh, CCI uh, standard velocity uh, 40 grain lead round nose uh, uh, rounds up to uh, a CI super high speed with 1500 uh, feet per second and a 30, 34 grain uh, uh, copper clad uh, bullet. Uh, and here's uh, here's the results that we came up with. Now, to be honest, we kind of knew what the performance would be for the PT-22 because we'd been through this before. Um, before we did the magazine fix, it wouldn't fire anything without failures. After we did the fix, it doesn't matter what we feed it, it does just fine. Um, with the Beretta, this was unknown territory. And again, people had been cautioning us, you know, that it's going to be finicky. Uh, so basically, you can see on the chart, everything fi fired uh, fine. It didn't matter what we fed them except that each of them had a failure to feed one round. It was always the last round. And that was with higher, some of the mid to higher velocity um, ammunition. Um, this is what we came up with. Uh, pretty good results. I wish it would have been 100%. It wasn't. But this, you know, full disclosure, this is what we came up with. And just for fun, here's what the target looked like when we were done with the testing. And, you know, it's about probably 200 rounds by the time we were done with our reliability testing. And we did some fast firing, uh, a lot of handheld stuff, all at four yards. Uh, we, you know, it was through a lot of lead downrange. And as we said, we had only one failure to feed the last round for each of the firearms. And that was... Uh, with the reliability testing with the eight different ammos and also all the other shooting that we did at the range that day. That was the only failures with either one. Our conclusion with the reliability um, testing is that both firearms did well. Uh, they 
only had a single minor malfunction that was failure to feed on the last round. Now, um, you know, that is an issue that has to be pointed out on both of these. Um, if you have a failure to feed or any kind of failure, you can't just rack the slide and keep shooting. You have to pop that uh, flip up barrel open and remove the round. Uh, in this case, it was the last round, so you know that wasn't a, a real problem, but you still have to rack that slide. And as I pointed out before, the PT-22, it's tough. I mean, for somebody with uh, weaker hands, um, it's impossible to rack the slide. Uh, so it's one thing to keep in mind. The Beretta, it's no problem. You can flip that with, uh, flip that slide with two fingers if you want to. Let's talk about uh, ergonomics of the two guns for just a minute. And as we've mentioned before, these firearms are really similar, but there are some notable uh, differences that we'll try to point out here. Um, first of all, um, the loading is pretty unique. We'll cover that very briefly. And then there's another issue that uh, really sets the two apart. As we've said, both of these load the same way. Of course, you just slap in a magazine and you'd use a loaded one, of course. Then you flip up the, the barrel like that. Uh, take your, will be your first round, drop it in the chamber, click it close, they're ready to fire and there's no need to rack the slide. Now the other factor that sets these two guns apart in terms of their ease of operation uh, is the uh, racking of the slide and, and uh, there's a couple of videos that will follow this. Um, and we'll show you the difference. Um, uh, the PT-22 has a real failing in this, that it is really, really difficult to rack the slide. Uh, my hands are pretty strong, and I have a hard time of it, and I had to put grip tape on it to do it at all. The Beretta, on the other hand, is really easy. You can do it with two fingers. Uh, take a look. Now we've talked a little bit about the, the width of the grips on both of these handguns. Um, and it's a factor. I mean, it's uh, with a small firearm like this, if you're in a hurry, sometimes it's really hard to get a hold of it, to get it out of your holster and bring it to bear, you know, on the threat. The grip is important. Uh, for me, I like the wide grip. It gives me something to, to grab onto. Um, and there are some differences. Uh, they're both the same width. It's 1.3 inches for either the Beretta or the PT-22. Uh, the grips on the PT-22 are a little longer. And you can see here uh, that uh, it looks like I could probably get three fingers on there. And I can, just barely. It's easy to get a really firm grip on this firearm. Now you can see here that the grip on the Bobcat is a little bit shorter. And for me, I can get just two fingers uh, on the grip, but it's uh, fairly comfortable. It still feels like a good, firm grip. And frankly, with uh, either of these firearms, since they're 22 long rifle, recoil is not a factor. So if you can get a good grip on it, uh, get it out of your, your holster with no problem, uh, bring it to bear on the bad guy, you're okay. In conclusion, uh, for the factors we looked at, uh, it's easy to get a good sound grip on either of these firearms. However, we, we found a, a real deficiency with the PT-22. It is difficult, if not impossible, to rack the slide uh, on that firearm. And so we've given the Beretta a big green thumbs up uh, for ergonomics, and we had to give the Taurus another questionable. Um, not a full thumbs down, but a questionable. This has been a, a fun project. Before we uh, present the results of our evaluation, uh, just one point that I mentioned earlier, and that's the difference in cost between these two. 
Uh, and again, you should expect to get what you pay for. The uh, manufacturer's uh, list price on the PT-22 is about $250 brand new. Uh, for the Beretta Bobcat, it's about $410, so quite a quite a big difference in price there. So you would expect the Beretta to perform better. And that is, of course, what we found. We've got, uh, for fulfilling the mission, the Beretta was uh, equal to the uh, PT-22. In quality, the Beretta performs better. In reliability, they were both quite reliable. In the ergonomics, uh, the Beretta performs better, mostly because of the failure uh, with the uh, ability of the shooter to easily rack the slide on the PT-22. So in summary, I guess if you had a choice and cost was not a factor, I would go with the Beretta Bobcat. Um, as I said, the manufacturer's list price on that is about $410 and, and up, depending on the options. That is the type of grip, the type of finish that you get with it, as opposed to the Taurus, uh, which starts, uh, the manufacturer's price starts at about $250, and you can go up to probably around uh, 275 280 depending on the options you get with it. Of course, you could buy either of these for probably a bit less uh, at, at your gun shop or on the internet. But just in general, I can say that uh, the Beretta 21A Bobcat appears to be the, the better of the two. As far as the two firearms that we evaluated, our Taurus PT-22 is is just fine for us. Uh, I'm strong enough to rack the slide with uh, a little bit of grip tape on there. Uh, beyond that, it performs flawlessly. Uh, the Beretta 21 is a great weapon, and it's 20 years old. I got to mention that it's 20 years old, and it seems to have withstood the uh, the test of time. Uh, with that, we'll say goodbye. Thanks for tuning in to this uh, Armed Anglican video, and we'll see you next time. Arrivederci.